Well, here's the thing. Sorry to burst your spell, Very but serious. burst your bubble even. <laughs> Break the spell, isn't it? Oh, no, breaking yeah. bubbles, bursting spells. Yep, no, yep. It, we actually all didn't meet. Oh no, we we most of us met right towards the end. Ships in the recap. night. Most of the yeah. Time. Mm. Recap at the very, very end, but but in fact, most of us didn't work with each yeah. other because because there are sort of lots of different plot lines and, and characters meeting up. But there was We've a had... moment because which on the first film there was a lot of this thing of like because there were the American actors and the British actors and this weird thing of words that are lost in translation. Mm. One random slightly frenzied moment on this <laughs> film, we decided to start. I introduced to, to the actors that we should, like... we should do the hokey pokey. He says we decided to start. This is what happens to That's Eddie at four. PM when he starts getting loopy, the musical Chocolate numbers come out yeah. and lots yeah. of singing. So, so I just thought we should all do the hokey pokey, and there was this sudden <laughs> uproar from the Americans going, "What the hell's the hokey pokey?" And they were like, "It's the hokey pokey," which sounds a bit dodgy and slightly rude to me. And we had a huge riot and um, discussion about whether the hokey pokey or the hokey pokey. It sounds was druggy the or sexual, either way you go. It's the hokey pokey. It's better, than, better than cheesy <laughs> pineapples, isn't it? <laughs> That's the only other thing I could think There's of. There's so many things cheesy you people say anyone? that are insane. Chalk and cheese. We say oil and oil and water for chocolate. Yeah, cheese. eggplant and aubergine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Coriander and cilantro. You didn't even ask no, us anything. Coriander this. and cilantro Sorry. are two different things. How's the interview going? <laughs> no, they're not. Yes. No, they're not. I was hanging out with Johnny uh, for a second. I got to hang out with him. And it was weird. I was just standing there in between takes. I was getting some air outside. He's got the full Grindelwald outfit on with the eye and everything. And uh, he's like, <laughs> he's like, hey, man, what are you doing? I'm just like, uh, getting some air. He's like, you wanted to come chill in my tent for a second? So I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So I'm sitting there in his tent, and he's got the fun, the, and he starts playing guitar. And just the image of, like, this, <laughs> this villain. <laughs> just, like, gleefully playing a guitar. You like this song? <laughs> I such an idea. Oh, my God. It was God. so it's lovely like... and awesome and wonderful. It's such a, oh, I'll never forget that. That's I get hilarious. to ask him all what sorts song of was it? I think he was just practicing for his band or something. Like. <laughs> Cause he's he's in a band. Right, right. He's like, you like that? You like that riff, man? Yeah. <laughs> you want to come to gig? I love it. <laughs> I just think it's so cool. That's hilarious. I got to ask him about Brando and stuff. Anyway, what about what you? What did he say about Brando? That's another hysterical story. So supposedly this is like uh, the first time he met Brando, he was nervous. <laughs> So he brought this little fart machine with him, you know, like one of those little like machines you have <laughs> in your pocket. What, the whoopee cushion? Yeah, no, it's like a machine, like it's like a box where you press it down, and it's like, <laughs> has different fart sounds. Right, right. So he has it in his, <laughs> so Johnny puts it in his back pocket and he sits down <laughs> next to Brando and he's just farting up a storm and, <laughs> and, and Johnny's just like, I'm sorry, man. I, I ate something weird today. And Brando's like, Jesus, Johnny, you have to get that fixed. It's disgusting. We have a dinner later. And then and Johnny, Johnny's just like, show, he can't help anymore. He shows him the device and then cut to the two of them just peeing their pants, laughing on the floor, like, this is the greatest thing. We have to bring it to the dinner. And then the two of them brought it to the dinner. They just farted throughout the whole dinner, just chuckling to themselves. And everyone's just like, eh. Who was stinking up the joint? I ate a lot of croissants. Um, so many every single day. <laughs> this is pretty More good. More croissants that were delivered by this amazing baker that figured out the right size, like not too big, not too small in the hands. And it was so buttery. It was like literally the best croissant I had ever had. And they had it delivered every single day because we had this scene where, am I allowed to say? Yeah, so totally. Flamel is handing us these croissants and <laughs> it was only, we shot only for like less than an hour a day for that exact scene. Because it was because a sunset scene. It was scene, a sunset, right? the sky was so beautiful and it's amazing that they care about those details, you know, they wanted to keep the actual sky. <laughs> and we shot that. <laughs> so many of us ate so many croissants <laughs> for, for weeks. And then was, that scene was it gone. It was at least at least three weeks. Three weeks. At least Every three weeks. single day. Every single day so for no, an hour. They would bring people into work just to go and try and get this scene in the golden hour, and they did it every day for weeks, and it is 100% not in the movie. 100% gone. Which it, is... It's just the fat from the, <laughs> from the croissants <laughs> that is evidently left in my body. <laughs> Please, stop and don't even. But it was so you, like, it you was have, so yeah, funny like, because like, yeah, Nagini right. yeah, right. eating a croissant. <laughs> Nagini with a croissant, it's like, Awesome. That was funny. 
Our favourite scene that we uh, shot over 20 days didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it was amazing. magic hour. And we went there every single day. We get mm. kitted up for like you know, five minutes of filming. And we did it, we were very serious. And in the reshoots, they were like, yeah, it didn't work. It was this lovely scene where Nicholas Flamel comes out at the end of the movie. With croissants. With croissants. As you do. That were flown in from London. And everyone's <laughs> sitting there eating croissants and the sun's there and it's beautiful. And I, they probably got to the end. Everyone was crying. They got to the end. Everyone's crying. Everyone's doing like their best acting. And then, <laughs> And then they get to the edit, they're just like, we can't have a whole long <laughs> scene at the end of the movie. Like, it's like it, wasn't yeah. it? It was just like, we need yeah. to get out of this movie. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's an alternate yeah. ending. And they all filled it down into just like us all looking. Which is always more powerful yeah. anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Just, I don't just just know <laughs> Mm. I can't believe it. <laughs> I had I, a scene yeah, with the, with my feet that I really uh, am sad that didn't get in because uh, first of all, Colleen I would make these incredible shoes that were just beautiful. In the French French Ministry of Magic, there is like a sloped floor, so like everywhere is sloped, and all of the Parisians are just walking around like so, <laughs> just like floating p practically. It's they no were big deal. London, though, the, yeah, but the, but in the in the thing, they are walking slowly and carefully, but. Queenie's a little off her, her center. She's a little ungrounded. And so mm. I was just walking and just like losing my footing. And they just did like a shot purely on my feet. And it was so funny. Just you see like little feet just like vroom, vroom, and, <laughs> and, and it didn't. Yeah, I was like, where are my feet? That's all I cared about in the whole film. And they were like, you have no feet. Uh, I like the bit with the, the teak, the floating tea kettle. The, the, like, the, knock it off, <laughs> get out of here. I don't mind it. The most aggressive teapot that ever was. Well, I don't know if it would be a favorite because I, I never saw it, but I just protect? found out something. Yeah. Oh. Something was cut where Tina Lita saved and my I, ass. Yeah. yeah, take care of Newt, which I thought was a nice balance to the beginning, the first film where he saves me when I'm in the scary chair. Yeah. And it was cut. <laughs> Yeah. I, I had a scene. Like, we don't with, want. Are we allowed? To, are, we, are we spoilers in there? I don't know. I don't know. Like. Say it. I had a scene with another professor, a certain oh. female yeah. professor, yeah. which didn't make it, which I wish had, because I just love that she's in. She's, she's back in this world. It was at Hogwarts, Hogwarts. yes. Oh. Urging on a spoiler. Well, she, she's in the film, yeah. but um, fleetingly. And we had this scene where she really got to do the full. And it was really funny. There's a lot of great stuff that was shot that isn't in the movie. That's how it always goes on things like this. Because I think David really likes to flesh things out. He likes mm -hmm. to try things and he likes to get it in its best form to have that material to make the movie that, that is really ultimately the movie that wants to be made. Yeah. And in this case, there's so much intricacy, there's so much complexity. David and you know and Mark Day are edit they've done an incredible job of making a fluid story out of this hive of information and so and Philippe always checking the sky for that perfect yeah. light and perfect settings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the nature of they maintain such a such devotion to the art form that is cinema, even as we, like other productions, just have the resources where we could blow right past that stuff. They're extremely attentive. And the result is croissant for all. Croissant for all. <laughs> There's a lot of love for Dobby in our cast. Yeah. Oh, that's a great yeah, answer. Because yeah, yeah. of course they were around, yeah, hundreds and hundreds of years old. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because that's a, there's a who's logic the issue one? of like who's, who's, who's the honorable one? <laughs> there's Dobby and then there's the uh, what's he's called yeah. a creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah not him. Not him. <laughs> like lock him Step in a cupboard. <laughs> Dobby, Dobby's our Dobby. man. Yeah, I suggested I, I, Hagrid, young Hagrid, but I just think it would be soon, creepy, yeah. creepy, yeah. creepy if you just catch a glimpse of young Tom Riddle. Bullying someone in the corner. Just in know? the background. Just, just yeah. as you pan past and everyone, <laughs> everyone to get the heebie-jeebies. Do, do? do you call it the heebie-jeebies in America? Yeah, yeah, oh, there yeah, you go. Heebie-jeebies. The whole bajoba. I think we invented it. Remember we call it the heebie-jeebie. Oh, mock me, mock me. Yeah. Hokey pokey. Hokey pokey. Hokey pokey. More Ooh. Hogwarts. More Hogwarts, more Dumbledore. More beasts, more maybe. Beasts, beasts. More I want a Leatherfold. I want a Leatherfold. I want a Leatherfold. Wait, when does Dobby. When... Like, how old is Dobby? Yeah. That's a good question. I don't, and Tom I don't Riddle, know. of course. Tom Riddle. Is, Tom, Tom Riddle, Riddle was born, to, yeah. we think, the year of this film, maybe? 1926? 
Yeah, 1926 or 27. What's Tom Riddle's birthday? The 31st of December. Right. Um, right? Yeah, but... 1926, I think. I'm not sure. You are sure. Don't play. <laughs> Own it. Maybe. Exact. Yeah, maybe. That's exactly <laughs> right. So, so Tom Riddle is now like an infant, like mm -hmm. one year old. And as we move to the next film, which I think skips a few years, Todd or Voldemort, <laughs> little Todd or Voldemort. So we want that. That's mine. And That's maybe my choice. We're just like, wait, do I know you? Or December. 31st, like, 1926. 